Moonlighter comes to me by way of Twitch via their bounty system that's currently in beta where they give you a key and then you stream it and if you make a certain number of viewers over a certain period of time then you're going to get a certain amount of money for it. So I did receive money by streaming this. That is actually where the key came from courtesy of Twitch. So thank you guys. Uh, we're going to do I <laughs> need for breakfast on it. You, most of you guys have actually already reached out to me individually, many of you, uh, and told me that this is the kind of game that I would totally love. And it turns out you're right. I have definitely professed my love of Link to the Past many times in the in the, in the past. Okay, uh, and you guys have obviously picked up on that. You've seen the trend of games I tend to lean towards, and this one is no different. Here I am in, as you can see, very much a Legend of Zelda style uh, dungeon. Right? It's grid-like. You see bottom left corner, there's a map there. Upper left corner, you got inventory, you have your health. You got, there's a heart there, it's just one. Uh, and then a health bar there. Upper right corner tells you what buttons uh, that you can currently press to switch weapons or switch, uh, switch um, or use one of your, or you're consuming your potions. Uh, and also access your inventory. Bottom right corner, that is a template or the, uh, sorry, the, the trinket that you can activate in order to teleport you out of this dungeon. Now I'm starting here because we're on level three of the first, uh, first tier of dungeons. And I wanted to start here so that way we could get some of the action out of the way because we also have the store stuff to talk about. And that's just pretty interesting. Again, I'm like five hours into it now thanks to the stream and a little bit of prep that I did before that. So I'm uh, relatively well versed in the game so far. And this the store part is far away the most intriguing part of the game. This part's great. The action is just basically run around, learn the patterns of these of these little mobs here. And then, like, this, this guy's gonna drop right here. No? Oh, he did. He actually did. I didn't see the drop. Ah! Got me. There you go. And actually, let me go ahead. Here we go. So you get treasure. And this is actually the first part of our inventory management's the game <laughs> segment. Actually, it's more like inventory management and then uh, the action dungeon crawler aspect. Uh, those two things they married together. Uh, this is the, uh, these are all basically all pieces you can just move into your inventory. That part's pretty obvious loot, but the upper right corner of each one has something on it and, uh, each one means something different. So this, for example, immediately sends an item, uh, in that direction, uh, to the shop. That's the shop. Obviously that's the other half of Moonlighter, the, uh, managing your shop. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll send this one because I'll probably take some more damage while I'm out there. Might as well go ahead and send this guy out. Oops, the whole thing. Here we go. We'll put that right, uh, right here. And then we'll just drop this guy in and then poof, there it goes. This one says, uh, I don't raise hidden while currently in dungeon. That's right. I forgot the question marks are, are all very plainly marked. Uh, we cannot stack it with that, which means it's a different item. So we're going to go ahead and move this over here, put it right here. What does this one say? Uh, destroys one item curse. Ah, this is actually very handy. Let me see. Because actually, would it allow me to? This is, here we go. This is actually so a little bit of uh, testing. What happens if I put it on this item that is currently hidden? If I take this stack and I put it here, will I be able to see what it is? Sure do. And I'm glad I did because that's garbage. <laughs> garbage compared to the things that I can make with this right here. Item in direction shown becomes this item upon returning to town. That is super awesome because this is on a book that sells for about 500 gold. The average item sells for about 200 or so, right? 100 to 200 per. Uh, so 500 on a single item is amazing. Just absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, it only stacks in fives. So what you have to do is take this thing, put it here. And then what we'll do is, uh, this is actually when I return to town. Okay, cool. So we'll just take something, five of something that I don't necessarily need. I don't need five of these right at this moment. So I'll go and put that there. And this one destroys one item curse. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's swap this guy because this means, this curse means it can only be placed at the top or the bottom. Uh, which actually I'll have to go here because that is technically the top up there. Uh, and put it right here. There we go. So yeah, that curse says it can only be placed top or bottom. There are some that are left and right as well. And we'll just take this, boop, and put it right here. There, now we have a nice and neat and tidy bag. If you have something that you don't necessarily feel like you need, like this, just eating up space, we could toss it in this mirror here, and we'll give at the upper left corner there one gold. And that's it. That was for that item, one item, actually. This one gives me one gold. Some of them give me a little bit more. I'm just going to trash this thing so you can see what it looks like in terms of money, 26. Uh, I believe those sell for a little bit more than that in the shop, so this is really just a... I want to get rid of trash items that are not worth other things that I have laying on the ground here. 
but at least I could turn some kind of a profit from it. Uh, this is the cost it would take for, this is the cost for me to actually teleport back using my pendant. And this is a portable, uh, a portable portal, basically, that allows me to go back and forth. So if you have a ton of really awesome stuff, but you know there's a ton of, ton more awesome stuff lying in just the next room over, then you can open up a permanent portal and it'll cost you 2,000 gold, which is pretty cheap considering that some of the stuff you can pick up can earn that back very quickly. All right. That was your crash course on just, just the treasure chest and your backpack. Oh, okay, so back to this part. Let's go ahead and go right up here. Uh, let's see, again, different enemies, different abilities, paths, uh, different types of attacks, loot, they all have their own like loot table. So like, these guys typically drop the spectacles, the lenses, uh, or that, sure. Just drop this for me, buddy. Just, just so I know, look, I know what I'm talking about. There we go. Look at that. I know what I'm talking about. Bottom right corner, you can see that it's charged up. It says it's ready for me to go ahead and use the pendant whenever I am ready. Uh, there's also a sparkle that occurs on the character whenever there's a secret in the room. And I really hope I don't get it because I'll have to go back and forth to the town in order to make this thing happen. But I usually miss it. So don't expect to see. There was somebody in chat who was, uh, damn, forgot about that thing. Who was very good at picking out whenever that thing was, uh, oh gosh, turn around, turn around, turn around. Whenever it was, there was a secret in the room, because I always missed it. And, uh, he's not here right now because I'm not streaming it. Wow, man, those guys mess you up. Good thing we have some potions. 40 health back instantly, each one. One more. Loot can and will fall into the pits if you're not careful. Uh, I didn't catch if, it, if, if there was any blinking when I first came in, so I'm just gonna jump in and see what happens. Nope, nothing, damn. <laughs> it cost me five health or something. It's fine. It's totally fine. Let's see. I'm gonna go to the left now. Oh, okay, this is this is basically like a um. It's just a can. And we're not gonna. There's a book there. It's gonna tell you some stories about the game. Um, the story is pretty thin. There's not really a whole lot going on. Basically, you're just, you're just trying to discover what's going on with these these randomly shifting caves and all the books and everything and paper is left behind. Oh geez, uh, all basically talk about. Oh, I don't even know what the heck that is. I've not seen that at all yet. Hold on. Oh, he's invincible to that. There's a little X above his name. Uh, Try to get this guy down. Get him away, get away, get away. Uh, oh, oh, oh. I don't know what he does. He just smashes things. Big crazy mouth. Yeah, I don't think there's any. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. He's probably just gonna eat me. I guess I don't have no idea. Uh, yeah. Anyways, the story is pretty thin, so let's not worry about that. Is he gonna follow me? The music has changed. I swear to you, I've not. Uh, the entire time I was playing earlier. Oh, you can't. You can't stop this guy. Oh my god, he's gonna follow me everywhere. <laughs> I don't know what the heck am I supposed to do with this guy? I think um, we just need to get as much of the loots as we can. Give me loots. Damn it. He's eating my loot. He's just a loot guy. Oh, bottom left corner. There it is. Okay. So what do I have to like go far? Oh, Jesus. This guy will only attack. Or only only uh, defends his front. I think we have to clear a room. I think we have to get one one gap room between the two of us. Damn it. Item breaks if you took too many hits. Okay. Uh, these are worth a lot of money. Let's see. Destroy one items upon return to town. And this one is it breaks. Take too many hits. Man, there's a lot of those. Uh, this one is also it breaks. So, geez, all these delicate things. Let's go ahead and actually toss a bunch of stuff just so I can make room for that. We'll get rid of these sticks. You kind of need some of those, but not that many. I have tons of these. Just trying to make some pocket change here so we can get moving. And then we're going to take out the lines and get rid of those as well. And the cores are not worth much right this second. So let's go ahead and we just move all this stuff over. That is going to do what now? Destroy that? Well, how don't we, why don't we do that? There we go. <laughs> That's probably the smart way to do it. Uh, is there anything else I want to get rid of real quick? Yeah, sure about this. Which basically means that we're kind of in a position where we're not necessarily getting a whole lot of loot now because we're pretty much full and we're just kind of grinding everything into nothing. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh my God. I'm so glad we did this. I'm so glad I started recording right now. This is gonna be odd. Wait, should I leave? I don't know. Oh man, I got loot. I got so much loot. Uh, let's see. Range, range. Whoa, okay. I can always leave at any time. That's good. Whoa, okay. This has got like a laser, laser tongue or something.
Try to get the, keep the damage up. Maybe it's better to do this. He's doing something up there, but I don't necessarily want to run up there and see. Slowly work my way up. Now he has some iframes while you roll. Is he smacking his belly? I think he's smacking his belly. Okay, there's his arms out there. Let me see. He's doing something. She's. Whoa. Okay, here comes the laser now, right? Yeah, there it is. There it is. He's aiming. He's aiming. He's aiming. He's aiming. He's aiming. Oh, okay. Gosh, she's like, I just pay a toll for that. Just gotta, gotta take a little bit of damage. Oh. Okay, let's see if I can get up and get some slaps on. Here we go. Ah. Watch out for the slaps. Watch out for the slaps. Oh, his hand went. Oh, we can stun him that way, it looks like. Oh, no, no, that's just part of my, uh, the elemental. Yeah, I just basically get in his face and just do some work there. He's gonna do a pulse to push me back. We're learning, we're learning. There it is. Whoa, that's a lot of rocks. Okay, let's get some distance this time. Oh. Okay, we can't shoot sideways. There we go. Oh! I am out of potions, it seems. Okay, that was his pulse to get out of the way. Then we can do this. Where's that first hand? There he is. Come on, come on, come on. I guess that was just basically the boss is such a signaling that we're gonna have an encounter here soon. But he's moving over, but I'm not, I'm not like letting up. No, 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 no! That's it! That's it! You have no health! Yes! Holy crap! <sighs> what is this thing? It's a key to the next... The next thing, isn't it? Am I recording? Oh my god, thank god I'm recording. Oh my god, I have all this loot now? Oh wait, I can travel back and forth using my thing. Alright, how do I get around this slot? What is this? Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Stairs. Cool. Cool. And we have uh, lots of books. Golem History, Golem History 2. These are actually all very, very expensive. Uh, let me actually go ahead and move as much as I can here first. And I think I'm actually going to take a trip back to the town and come back because I could probably. Wait, can I use this? <gasps> Can't use it. It's gonna force me to trash a bunch of crap. Well, that's fine. I guess trash the stuff I don't necessarily really need. Uh, let's see. You, 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 you. Uh, those gonna break, but those stack there. Good. Let's see. We don't necessarily need all of you or you. And then I'll go put the books in now. And all the papers. Bam. Perfect. All right. So instead of leaving this stuff all here to basically rot and not make you any money, you might as well go ahead and throw that at that, and then get some money back. Don't just leave money laying on the ground. Here we go. So the next half of this video is going to be essentially us running the shop. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. The shop is super important. There's a lot of stuff to go over. So hopefully, again, this is pretty much a crash course in this game because I've spent so much time in it. Uh, hopefully... We get everything covered. Let me go. Go to the right this time. Smart. Yeah, look at me. All right, let's see. That leaves us with... Okay, good. Now we're done. Oh, what is this? Oh my god, it's a portal back. I just trashed all that stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, they gave me a portal. <laughs> well, now we know. <laughs> For next time, teleport back. Please tell me the portal stays open. Oh, wait, it doesn't look like it does. We made it all the way, look at that. And we got a bunch of loot there, you see it's flipping over. Removing the curses, converting things, doing all that. Lots of books, lots of papers, sell for a lot. Quite, a, quite, quite a bit. Alright, key goes in. Then, uh, I'm guessing it put itself in, it's gonna turn itself, right? Oh, that's right, you need five keys to unlock that, that's part of the, uh, the story here. This old man's here, gonna tell me, what, you found a key? It was you, wasn't it, Will? The one who defeated the Golem King. Boy, you put yourself in such unnecessary danger. A lock on the door opened. 
Maybe Pete was onto something. Regardless, just leave it. That door isn't worth your life. Pete didn't heed our warnings and, well, he's dead by the way. Due to the buzz your heroics are creating, the town has decided to reopen the forest dungeon. But with the Gong King dead by your hands, now is a great time to focus on Moonlighter. That's the name of your, not just the game, it's the name of your shop. Take advantage of this momentum to expand the shop a little bit. The town board should show what contractors are available. Oh, this is going to be good. A somewhat strange traveler is looking to set up shop in town as well. He specializes in crafting odd ornaments and such. Could make for some great decorations once you expand. And finally, Andre over there at Vulcan's Forge is preparing some new gear. He predicts an, un -influx, an influx of materials from the forest dungeon to occur as people become more brazen due to your recent actions. Go there, see what you can offer. Okay, yes, okay, okay, here we go. Oh, I, I finally get tired of it. It's the last frame and he was like, go, oh, be well, my son. Or my boy or whatever. All right, here it is. Second dungeon's open. Now we can go through. I can show you guys the vendors. So actually, let's go here real quick and see. Town and shop. So this is important. This is basically the NPCs that you unlock. Uh, you unlock by paying. This is the guy that basically decorates your house. Well, he'll sell you stuff that you could put around your house. And uh, this gentleman here uh, is your, yeah, it's basically the banker. It's the investment manager, essentially. So I already have the the forge. I have uh, uh, the um, the wooden hat, which does all the enchants and everything. And then I have Le Retailer, uh, who sells, uh, what does he sell? Finest items. There you go. So he sells finest items. <laughs> It looks like he, he's got the recycle symbol, so I'm guessing he buys and sells wares for probably a better price than the mirror does in your backpack. And here we go. This is Andre. Andre does all of your gear. Also super important. All the gear here is going to allow you to pr slowly progress your way up. Most of them focus in two different forms. Uh, where one would be like just straight damage increase all the way up. The other one is like an elemental Dan type damage as you go all the way up. You can see right next to the damage on the right hand side there. You don't have, I don't have mouse uh, control here unfortunately, so I can't uh, actually point to things when we do this. So the first thing you do is you collect the, the required elements in order to make uh, the, like for example, the big sword. I need to have uh, uh, the stupid teeth, vine, and broken sword uh, in order to make just the sword. And then from there I can upgrade it by getting these other items, including the sword. So if I could make this sword, I guess I should make an awesome sword if I wanted to. Uh, you have spears, you have gloves, and you have bows uh, and sword and boards, of course. Uh, your armor, you have your circlets, your crowns, your chest pieces, your pants, or sorry, not your pants, your, uh, your, uh, your boots. And I still don't have the damn resources to make these, damn it. Uh, and this is where you basically go to get those done. Now, once you're done doing those, and also I should mention on the right hand side, you can see there's there's health, uh, health, damage, armor, and uh, speed. There's the, the limit of speed, I think is 180. So, or 160, maybe it's 160. Let's just say 160 to be safe. Uh, so minus eight is not really that big of a deal, but minus eight, minus another four, minus another four, then it starts to add up a little bit. You start to feel it a little bit. Uh, I actually am wearing this right here, which is minus uh, minus four. That's minus eight or plus eight. Plus eight. Sorry. This is uh this chest piece is minus four. I'm actually wearing it. I don't really notice the difference. But as it gets heavier, bigger and bigger. Uh, well, the next tier up looks like it's heavier. Uh, not so much so for the other ones. So there you go. That's that's him. We're gonna go now talk over here. There's so many systems, uh, but they're all super simplified, and that's the thing. The game isn't necessarily deep. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but it keeps it pretty simple, which is kind of nice. It's like it's like two and a half steps above a clicker, right? So here we go. So Eris basically does the potions and the enchantments. I'm not gonna show you potions. It's the same thing as crafting the weapons and armor. You just, it's just for making health potions and whatnot. So the only difference is you can use materials to buy, to, uh, materials that get a discount on the price or you can just buy one straight out and it costs you two or three times as much. There you go, enchantments. This is where you go and you pick the item that you want to enchant. Uh, for example, this one requires uh, three of those red things. I forget what they're called and it'll give me, uh, it'll give me plus 15 armor to this particular item. I also can upgrade my shield to do even more damage, or sword and board, sorry. Uh, which I love this thing, so I will probably definitely do that right now. Yes. Cha-ching! Now it does more damage, just straight up more damage. I could do it again and do even more damage, but I do also want to balance it with this guy, because this thing has also saved my ass many, many times. So there you go. So every single item you get probably has the ability to be upgraded. All you need is the necessary materials. That cost me a shitload of money, didn't it? 
<laughs> that cost me so much money. So those are the two NPCs I currently have that I really give a crap about to show you. I could spend all day showing you all the other ones, but we're not going to do that. Also, I'm broke, so I need to go and make some money. And that's the other half of the game. This is the shop. <laughs> There's so much. This is the shop. This is your cashier, right? Your uh, register. These are your tables. So I'd go over here and I would say, you know what? I'm going to sell this thing, so I'm going to quick place that, right? Now, it comes up as zero. Why? Because this item, the Golem Designs 3, I have actually never sold. So this page is, this book is your uh, your, your ledger, your, your bookkeeping. It keeps track of what the overall trend and popularity of the item is because you can potentially flood or starve the market, driving prices up or down. Uh, and also it tells you the, what the reactions mean. When the, char when the play characters come in, you'll see this in a moment, they'll give you a reaction. That tells you if you're too high, too low, or just right. And then populate right below that, and then of course a description of what the item is. So, I have Gollum, Gollum's Designs 3, I have two of them. I know this one sells for 1500 and it makes people happy. So why don't we go ahead and try to drop it in there for 3000 and see what's up. And if somebody comes in and says, uh, no, then we know we goofed and we gotta change it real quick. Now, if you want to really test the market, obviously you'd want to split this up and only do like one, one at a time. But in the case of, for just for the sake of the video, we're going to go ahead and just get rid of as many as we can. So that one sold for 1500 It was a good, that was a good price. This one sold for 500 before. It was actually a good price for that. Yeah, perfect. See? With the, the good face. The, the, yay, this is a pretty all right item. And this one right here sold for 1500 was also a great face there. So this table is now packed. Come over here. Oh, do the same thing here. See, so I have 1500 Uh, this one. I realize some of these are actually the same. They just have, didn't stack themselves up, which is fine. Uh, let's see. I just want to double triple check on some of these things because otherwise we'd be throwing money out. So there we go. You could, you could risk like raising the money, raising the dollar amount a little bit. But I mean, honestly, with the way the game just puts you right back into the dungeon, you just make more money. So it doesn't really matter if you're like, it, you could risk potentially losing a sale just because you wanted to make an additional 100 gold when you could have made 100 gold in two seconds in the dungeon. So, uh, so this thing has never sold. Uh, what is it? Golem King Jottings. Let's see. What do we have in here? It's even close to this. Nothing actually. Huh. The designs of 1500. Let's give it a good, a good hefty price here. What did that 15, uh, 1500? See how that stands. Okay. So this is basically our paper run, all paper. This right here is essentially upgradable slots. You buy things, you put them here, and they give you an extra whatever bottom the bottom corner. I really wish I could hover a mouse over this stuff so I could show you guys tooltips tool or something. Um, but you can see at the bottom there, uh, it, it shows basically all these stats. You can increase the coin. The one I currently have looks like an eyeball. It's a coin actually, so it means that they're gonna t they're gonna tip an additional twenty percent on every sale. If you take this thing out, then they only do ten percent. Boop. That's it. That's what that does. And so that's it. Now we can actually start the show. But over here, there is actually also the bed. Oh, and this. What is this? Uh, okay, I know that. That means that we we destroyed the uh, the left hand um, uh, boss. So that's all that is. Okay, cool. We have a couple chests. This is basically where you go to store stuff, and I have a lot of stuff. All mostly mostly mats for um, uh, for doing. Oops, all this stuff over there. Uh, words are gone right now. Uh, for crafting, let's go ahead and open the store. Here we go. Welcome, everybody. You cannot talk to the customers. So you can just basically go back here and stand if you want. You watch what they're looking for. That person comes in looking for some paper, some parchment, something like that, right? Uh, I have lots of that, so hopefully... Which also means that they'll probably pay a little bit more for it. Hmm. Oh, nice. So she wasn't necessarily happy with the price, but she's going to buy it anyway. That was huge. That's 6000 right there, plus the 20%. 7800 Or whatever that is. That is quite sound, right? There we go. Okay, everything's selling, actually. That's pretty good. That person found a sale. Okay, so you see that face right there. Uh-oh. 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 Come back here. Come back here. Come back here. Boy. I also have to get impatient here. So that means that thing sold for a deal. I'll have to watch out next time. Good. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I gotta play some more stuff. Kid trying to steal my stuff, man. What the heck? Alright, these books, I don't think I've sold any of them. Uh, okay, this one, yes, I have. What does this sell for? 500, good, and it's low low demand, so that might actually be a little risky doing it that much. Let's do this. These ones, however, Golem History 3, that's Golem Volume, right? Well, volume, not even Volume 1, it's Volume. Let's see, this one is the Golem History 1, 2, and 3. We have all of them. Uh, this one right here is uh, 1. Okay, so let's start this one off here at uh, 1500, and we'll have to just watch and see what happens. And we'll do this one at uh, 3000. And we'll actually pull this one back, and we have a three, we have a 3 here. Put that one in, and this one we'll put in at four thousand or five thousand. I think like six thousand is a bit much for a single book. Um, 
So here we go. Go ahead and throw some more in here. That person's holding that item. Notice it didn't give me a, uh, it didn't tell me anything yet. It didn't say, oh, the person's happy or not happy with it. Uh, but it's not in the slot, which means that they're gonna take it. See? There we go. And if they wait in line too long, I believe they will leave. I've not, I've not yet let anybody wait that long, so I don't necessarily know if that's true, but I'm pretty sure they probably would just leave. All right, come on, buy, buy my stuff. Yes, good. This is probably the most money I'll make in a single day. And I can't, this is, I've said that now so many times just over the past several uh, shopping days, shop working days. Nice. Okay, well, those books though. Yeah, come on. Oh, you want those books? Yes! Oh my god, I nailed it! Okay, I nailed it with one. So, volume one is good, price-wise. There we go. Fantastic. Give me all your monies. Look at this little kid, look at this little punk-ass kid. Hey, 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 loss prevention, loss prevention. Loss prevention, suspicious, suspicious-looking character. Look at you, look at you, look at you. Jeez, jeez, oh, they bought the other book. <gasps> what was this one, two? Two was, um, uh, I had a 3,000. Now you can, if you want, you can go and look on, I guess, Reddit or something like that. There's a spreadsheet that tells you the prices of all the items, what the hot, what the sweet spot is for all those. That was a $3,900 sale. Here! Oh crap, that's the wrong one! <gasps> no, don't pick it up! Oh, oof. is that three? That's two. Oh wait. Why don't I do the other one? Hold on, we, we need to rack this up because it's this damn thing. These people are buying all my stuff, man. I feel like I'm losing money. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. Could have made a 3,000 gold sale right there. 4,000, 4,000, ah, 3,000. You twist my arm, lady. Too bad I can't like go and grab it. Like, look, lady, oh my gosh, she's gonna go back to it? Oh, <gasps> really? I've never actually seen that. Usually they leave. Nice, All right, well, I hit it. Perfect, make grandma happy. Done. Now, I can't go back here if I wanted to and grab some more stuff out the, out the box here and be like, okay, let's go ahead and try to sell some of these things before these people all walk out. Uh, and I guess I probably should, but I don't necessarily see anything. I had this all organized all nicely and it's all done. Dang it, jerks. Super video game, what the heck? Okay, so that's it. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and dismiss everybody by simply rocking over here and just trying to close the door, holding it shut or holding it open, telling everybody to leave. And this is where you go through and you see your daily receipts. This is how much money you made throughout the day. Yes, this is the most money I've made in a single day. Again, I've said it several times over the past weeks worth of days in the game. Uh, so it is, um, uh, so yeah, it's, <laughs> uh, it's great. The money is definitely ramping up. If I buy a better cash register, and this is true, if I buy a better, buy a better cash register, then I'll get even, even more tips uh, on top of it. You can actually get up to 40% tips. Which isn't insane to me, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, all these all items that I sold, looks like everything sold for a fantastic amount of money. 11700 on the highest ticket, uh, highest dollar ticket. Over here, it actually shows the demand. The demand go up or down or, uh, or just kind of stay in the middle, medium, up or down. Uh, and this tells you it right here, popularity. This helps you track the market, kind of see where things are at. Obviously, all these things also exist inside the book itself, the ledger that you keep all your notes on all these things that you're selling. Uh, and at the same time, also, and this thing you kind of miss sometimes because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, um, uh, customers in the shop, so you, you miss it. But if a customer buys something from you, usually it'll pop up a little thing, uh, a little icon, a little bubble that will say up or down, uh, a low or high, and that basically means that the popularity of the item has changed. So it doesn't change. It doesn't do all the calculations on whether or not what the market currently has at the end of the day. It does it in real time. So that's what makes the shop part. So you see, it's it, it's not super deep. Like you're not actually crunching the numbers, right? Uh, yeah, it, but it is, it, but it has just enough, just enough to make you, uh, uh, to keep you, keep you hooked. Just, just simple enough to keep you hooked. So, that's it. Started it off in a dungeon, ran it off in the shop. That's pretty much Moonlighter in a nutshell. Game is currently $19.99. Uh, I am in love with the game. Uh, you guys are totally right. It is absolutely a game that I would be uh, interested in. So I appreciate you guys bringing it to my attention because uh, I love it. I think it's awesome and I'll probably end up playing hopefully a lot more of it. So that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out. My name is Mike B. This is Moonlighter. The show is called In For Breakfast. I'll see you.